It's now been 11 days since the Israel-Hamas war began. Our next guest just introduced a bill that aims to prevent Iran from accessing billions of dollars in frozen assets that were made available to the country as part of that U.S. prisoner uh, exchange last month. NBC News reported uh, last week that a Treasury Department official did tell House Democrats uh, that the U.S. and Qatar uh, had agreed not to let Iran access uh, the funds. Joining us now, South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott. He serves on the Foreign Relations Committee and is a 2024 uh, candidate for president, uh, obviously. And Senator, uh, good to, to see you again. Have you on, on Squawk Box again uh, this morning. We, um, man, I remember the Shah, Senator. I rem th this place has been a thorn in our side and a problem for decades. And, and Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, the, the, uh, the idea that we need to engage with our enemies, that sometimes that seems like the appropriate attack. Other times it's like, what are we trying to do when it's a country that, that wants to destroy Israel and wants to destroy us? Have we, have we mismanaged it with, in, in recent years? We have. I mean, one of the things that you've seen in the last couple of years is the weakness of President Biden leads to conflict across the world. Frankly, you, you hear his comments, whether it's a, a small incursion in Ukraine might be OK. Don't attack these areas from a cyber perspective as he's talking to Putin. And then you watch what happens with Israel. Hamas attacks the bloodiest day since the Yom Kippur War. We have to stand shoulder to shoulder with no daylight with our allies. The, the world needs to know that we are loyal to our allies and we will be lethal to our adversaries. And that's been missing for the last couple of years. And frankly, the hostage payment of $6 billion. You know, Joe, I said it under the Obama administration. When he paid $400 million for hostages, you will only increase the price on every American life abroad, and now we see $6 billion. So the first misstep is paying a ransom. The second misstep is not realizing you cannot make a good deal with a bad actor, and Iran is a bad actor. 90 percent of the money that goes to Hamas comes from Iran. After the attack, Hamas thanks Iran, freezing those assets actually will save lives. We must not only stop there, we must go one step further and have the Secretary of the Treasury. It's why I'm leading on this bill, having the Secretary of the Treasury report on all assets Iran has, over $5 million, so that we can target them and then extend, finally, my legislation from May, extends the sunset. We make it permanent. Sanctions on the energy sector in Iran. They must feel the price. And the plenty pain. of blame, I guess, to go around. This is Republicans picked a bad time to, um, you know, be basically unable to fund Israel and, and you know, Ukraine, regardless of there's I, I see people go back and forth about how much more aid we, we should give to Ukraine. But we're not giving aid to anyone, even to Israel at this point, because of this uh, what's mess. happening, it, what's happening in the House on the GOP side of things, Senator. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things I would suggest, if I were president of the United States, I would be calling on my party to have a speaker pro tem, make uh, Patrick McHenry the speaker pro tem, so that business can be done in the House. It's, frankly, 221 members, Republicans. We need 218 to choose a speaker. Why don't we get the people's business done by making Patrick McHenry at least the speaker pro tem so legislation can move, so that the funding apparatus that will be necessary to support Israel has a path forward, get it to the Senate, and let the president sign it. There are things that can be done as a stopgap measure to make sure that the House continues to function. If I were the president, I would be at the microphone telling the party Let's remember, the road to socialism runs right through the divides in the Republican Party. Get the people's house in order. And then I would, frankly, encourage a changing of the rules. Having 4 percent of your Congress able to eliminate your speaker is probably bad decisions after bad decisions, even into the future. Senator, you, uh, you were early on mentioned frequently as, as a maybe a viable uh, alternative to uh, to former President Trump. I, I don't know what you need to do. You, you have a PAC. I like the name. It's a trust in the mission, but the, it stands for Tim. So you're Tim PAC, super PAC. Yes. 
they're not going to spend any more uh, money, money on, on TV. They're going to focus on grassroots. But in explaining why they're doing it, they're not even really blaming you or, or talking about your, your prospects. You, you haven't qualified for the next debate. You're in um, maybe in, in some of the early states, you're as high as 6 percent, but low single digits nationally. And, and uh, your, your South Carolina colleague is ahead. And they're just saying at this point, no one's focused or ready for a Trump alternative. And this is a direct quote from, from the co-chair of the Super PAC. We're doing what would be obvious in the business world. Uh, we're not going to waste our money when the electorate isn't focused or ready for a Trump alternative. What, what, what needs to be done? Maybe could, we co could Republicans coalesce around one person if there was a smaller field? And do you need to drop out? Well, obviously, I'm in for the long run without any question. I, I don't know. My, I trust Senator Cory Gardner. I chose him to run the Super PAC. He's doing a good job. One of the things that we've realized throughout the last several days is breaking through in any of the media with any campaign material is just useless. Why waste those resources when you can save them for the end of the campaign when you will have the opportunity to break through? Uh, knowing that and knowing that the number one job that we can do right now is support Israel, we know that every Every news cycle, we're going to focus on our job and our responsibility to lead on sanctions legislation, to lead on closing the southern border, or at least let us freeze the assets and provide sanctions to the Council of the Mexican Cartels. These are things that I can lead on right now in this challenging time in our nation. We're using those resources when they will count the most in late December and early January is a good decision. My assumption is that is a decision being made by my super PAC. More importantly, making sure that America America, the entire nation, leans into support for Israel is something we should all focus on right now, because it's the only thing that's mattering, and that's the one thing that breaks through in all the news cycles, is making sure that America understands that all of our leaders should be standing shoulder to shoulder and back to back with Israel.